Okay, so um, now it's time to do some entropy. So, <coughs> hydrogen reacting with carbon disulfide, as shown below, gives me delta H, which is exothermic, and delta S as well. Why does this reaction have a negative entropy change? Okay, well, let's have a look. Over here, I've got four gas molecules, uh, sorry, four hydrogens and a uh, uh, carbon disulfide, so five gas molecules on this side, but I've only got a total of three gas molecules on that side. So I've got five molecules becoming three molecules, which um, is obviously a decrease in the entropy. Um, standard entropies are shown in the table below. Calculate the standard entropy for H2. Okay, so they've given me the overall value here. So I've got to use that to calculate um, the overall value. So um, I know that I've got to get to minus 164, and it's going to be the standard entropies of the products minus the sum of the standard entropies of the reactants. So the products are methane. I've only got one methane, so that's 186. And I've got two hydrogen sulfides, which is going to be plus... 2 times 206 and that's going to be minus the reactants the reactants are carbon disulfide which is 238 plus 4 hydrogen so whatever hydrogen is 4 times H2 so if we work that out if you do all of that calculation you should get minus 524 is equal to 4H2. You divide by 4 to give you H, oh, so it's might equal to minus 4H2, so obviously that's minus all of that. Um, so uh, you can then cancel out both sides, um, where well, divide by minus 4 on both sides, H2 is equal to plus 131 joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay, so moving on, um, explain with a calculation whether this reaction is feasible at 25 degrees C. Remember, whenever you see 25, whenever you see degree C in um, entropy, always convert to Kelvin. So 25 degrees C, first of all, is 298 Kelvin. So please just always think that because it causes so many uh, little mistakes um, and then it really messes up your further calculations. So delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Um, delta G is therefore going to equal delta H, <coughs> which they told me was minus 234, minus 298 times by delta S. Now delta S, you'll remember, is minus 164, but that's in joules per mole per Kelvin. So remember to divide this boy by a thousand to get it into kilojoules um, per Kelvin per mole. Um, and if you do that, do all that calculation, it's minus 234 plus 48.9, which is equal to minus 185. Therefore, you just need to state delta G is less than zero, and therefore it is feasible. Explain with a calculation of significant temperatures above uh, 1,154 degrees C for this reaction. Again, it's in degrees C, so what do you do? You must convert it to Kelvin. That's 1427 Kelvin. So just remember to do that. So let's do this. Um, get rid of that random line that I've made. Um, so delta G, same as up here, minus 234, minus 1427 times minus 0 0.164 which is this boy up here. If you do that, it gets to 0 0.028, say, which is pretty much zero. So at temperatures higher than 1,154 degrees C, 
the reaction is not feasible because delta G would be positive. Okay, so let's have a look at this one now, nice equilibrium question. Um, so we've got the equilibrium up here, chemists mixed together one mole of SO2, 0.5 moles of O2 of a catalyst, compressed it to a volume of 250 centimeters cubed, reached equilibrium, and at equilibrium 82% of the SO2 had been converted. Determine the concentrations of SO2, O2, and S3 present at equilibrium and calculate Kc for this reaction. So let's do it. Um, let's keep that up there. I'm going to write the equation up on the board so that will just remind us. So we've got 2SO2 rather plus O2 is in equilibrium with SO3 and that's two of those. And 82% of this boy had been converted. So. I started, <coughs> so initially, I started with one mole of that, 0 0.500 moles of that, and none of that. At equilibrium, 82% of this had been converted, so if I'd lost 0.82 of that, um, I'm left with 0.18 moles. For every two of those, I only need one of those. So if I've lost 0.82 of that, I've lost 0.41 of this. So I'm left with 0.09. And for every one of those I lose, I gain that. So I must have now 0.82 moles of that. I now need to work out my concentration. For concentration, I'm going to divide all of these by 250 and times by 1,000. Um, because the volume of the container is 250, and then you times it up by 1,000. So if you do that, you get 0 0.72, 0 0.36, and 3.28. Now, easy peasy, we just bung it into KC. So Kc, let's just make sure we get this right, is the concentration of SO3 squared divided by the concentration of SO2 squared times the concentration of O2. Bung those numbers in, you get 3.28 squared divided by 0.36 squared Oh no, sorry, not 0.36 squared, is there? Because that's O2. Um, 0.36 times 0.72 squared. Yep, that's the right one. Okay, if you do that, you get 10.7584 divided by 0.1866. And so your final answer should be, ooh, the paper's doing what it's doing. 57.6. Now it's unit time, so I've got moles per decimeter cubed, and that's squared at the top, and moles per decimeter cubed, cubed at the bottom. So that goes, that goes. So my units will be moles to the minus one decimeters cubed, like so. <coughs> Right, so, uh, <laughs> explain what happened to the pressure as the equilibrium was allowed to reach equilibrium. So, um, as, the, as we reach equilibrium, um, the pressure is going to decrease, um, because obviously um, we started off with lots of that and um, none of that. So the equilibrium was moving in that direction. I've got three moles of gas on that side and I need two moles of gas on that side, so the pressure would decrease. The value for Kc decreases with increase in temperature. Predict the sign of the entropy change to forward reaction. Um, so, what's that telling me? So, if Kc is decreasing, as I increase the temperature, the equilibrium is moving that way. So, if I'm increasing T, my temperature, 
the equilibrium will move in that direction. So remember, if I increase the temperature, the equilibrium shifts in the endothermic direction. Um, and therefore, that must be endothermic. Therefore, the forward reaction is exothermic and delta H is going to be negative. Um, and the effect on the yield of SO3 is it's going to decrease. Right, so this question comes up quite a lot. So what I've tried to do is give you a little bit of an answer for this one. So the chemist repeated the experiment with the same temperature, same concentration of SO2, but an excess of O2. Stay and explain in terms of Casey how the equilibrium yield of SO3 would be different from the yield in the first experiment. So the first thing to always state is Casey will not change. Casey only changes if you change temperature. Casey doesn't change. So Casey does not change. If you increase the concentration of O2, this denominator is going to get larger and therefore the equilibrium has to shift so this gets smaller and that gets larger so that Kc is restored. So the equilibrium shifts, so the concentration of SO3 increases to make the top of Kc expression greater and restore the numerical value of Kc.